Queen Mary, as always, thank you for co-hosting. Of course. Happy to be here. To our 16 storytellers, thank you for once again showing up and crafting and preparing and getting ready to share these phenomenal stories. They're always great. And to our uh, audience, thank you for being here. And again, as you hear these stories, other than our first storyteller, who I'll introduce in just a moment, um, after each, each, after four, you're going to vote. Now, Mary will summarize, but you have to pay attention because you're going to vote. So whatever system you have for that, use it. And at the end of each of those four, I will put up a poll. And if I do my job correctly, you will, you will see, see that poll very clearly and, and get to vote. Yes. Good? It's fabulous. Awesome. All right. So uh, teller number one, not competing in Chicago, Illinois. We met last year. She's lovely. Her name is Ann Perky. She goes by Vandy and she's going to kick us off uh, with a 99 second story. So Ann Perky, you are unmuted. Take it away. Okay, Sean. So I get this notice from the DMV in the mail that I need a form from my psychiatrist proving I'm of sound mind to drive. Fucking sound mind to drive? Who gets a form like this? Now I am bipolar and only had four ambulance rides strapped down in the 80s, but now I'm stabilized on a little cocktail of meds that makes me a respectable suburban housewife. I have a black lab, a big house with a lawn, and occasionally have sex in the missionary position with my banker husband. So I call my psychiatrist, Dr. Katz, who I have a love-hate relationship with. I get Katz on the phone and explain about the form. There's a pause. Then he says, well, I'll fill it out if you don't mind that I'm brutally honest. I get off the phone and I am in shock. What the fuck? Brutally honest? Am I being denied the right to drive by this quack? Does he think I'm going to slash my wrist in a car wash? Slashed wrist, the 80s. Tape a bag around my head in the woods? Failed at that, May 90. I turn to vengeance. Katz doesn't know who he's dealing with. He ain't going to renew my license. I'll take him down. Yelp reviews, drive-bys, texting patients that he says, good luck, when they're suicidal. Two days later, I open my email, and there's the form, with a short note from Katz. I filled it out, and I was brutally honest. And the truth is, he of all people, should know my dark stuff is totally in the past. And he, of all people, should know how hard I've worked to get where I am today. I am a triumph. Boom. Boom. And Mandy Perky, thank you very much. And next time you're going to compete, right? All right, she had one story. She wanted to share it. She's live in Chicago. She always shows up. Thank you very much for that. Love your honesty. Love your honesty. Yeah. As always. All right, don't be offended, but I'm gonna. Can you? We're gonna. We're gonna take you off of spotlight, and you've muted yourself. We have trained them well, Mary. We have. This is this is a you know amazing group. So they already know what's gonna make it run well. I love this of them. They're amazing. Correct. Correct. All right, let's kick this off. Uh, a couple people are rolling in, but we are at the time where we need to start. And we're going to keep this moving uh, fast. Now, you all see, I'm just going to mix these up right here, uh, go into the proving hat. And remember, this is unlike most slams, going first, getting called now, it does, there's no negative to that, mm -mm. right? Because we've got these four sections of four. Right. We worked it out. Yeah. Then they can relax. Oh, until relax. The next, yeah. If they, always tweaking. They always tweaking. Storyteller number one, live from West Virginia, Linda D. Spotlighting Linda, unmute yourself and you take your time, young lady. In all of her 79 years, 
grandma never had a brand new car. Then the gas company drilled six wells on the farm and all that changed. Money came rolling in. Sitting around the scuffed farmhouse table, she decided she'd tell the grandchildren all about her big adventure. So she took her shiny aqua blue Buick out on the open road. Coasting along, she was proud of her newly acquired driving skills. She rolled her sleek sedan down Highway 33 towards Elkins, West Virginia. At the top of Punkintown Hill, she floored it. Ahead, a totally unobstructed open mountain mile straight shot. Zooming along, she topped the next ridge, whizzing by Tiger Valley Regional Jail, waving at Cousin Jim, who just happened to be incarcerated there and coincidentally was exercising in the jail yard. She had 118 miles an hour. All six grandchildren screamed in unison, Grandma, you could have hit a cow. You could have had a wreck. You could have got hurt. Grandma snorted. I didn't have any grandbabies with me in that car. It was just me and the Lord. And he wanted to see how fast my car would go too. Boom. Boom. Linda in West Virginia kicking it off. Show Linda some love. <laughs> Great job, Linda, as always. Thank you. Mary, what do you think of that? You know, everybody's going to have fun at whatever age they are. Yes, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> We're never going to comment on the quality of the story. It's completely subjective. Never do I want to influence votes. However, we might have a comment about the content of the story. That's right. That's a reasonable response to somebody's story, whether it's a 99 second story or a longer story, right? Fair. I uh, love, love, love this event. It's amazing, Sean. I just love this event. It's amazing. All right, next up, we're gonna keep this moving along. Storyteller number two, Ms. Janine Scott. I'm gonna spotlight you. Janine, take your time. When I was 16 years old, I had a job working as a waitress in a country club. This particular day, it was super busy. This man walks in with his entourage, at least 10 people. So I go to take his order and he orders a hamburger, not cut in half. He said, I want it on the plate, full, not cut in half. Now I know him, he's super particular, so whatever. I put the order in and it's taking forever. Every time I go out, I get dirty looks. Finally, I go back into the kitchen and hooray, the order's ready. But there sits the hamburger and it's cut in half. I said to the chef, I can't take this out. This man is super fussy. He's going to freak. The chef looks at me like, are you kidding me? So I take out the order. I put the hamburger down in front of him. He looks at it. He takes his napkin off his lap. He stands up from the table and he starts screaming at me. You've ruined my meal. Take this hamburger back and do it properly. I was 16 years old. Never forgot that man. Never forgot how cruel he was and how he humiliated me in front of everyone. I'll also never forget what the chef did to that second hamburger I had to bring him. Turns out he had a bit of a temper as well. Boom. Boom. Thank you, Ms. Janine Scott. Uh, Mary, when I don't know, uh, you, no one, I, you always say Ms., correct? Yes. It's the safer thing to do. <laughs> yes. So I will say Mr. or Ms. moving Agreed. forward to be safe. And I think that you have been unspotlighting people for us, have. have you not been? And I really appreciate that. Of course. You're We're a team. We are. You're trying to pull names and do time. I figured I can help by clicking a button. Thank you. Of uh, as, as, as we often see, the chat is full of comments yes. being directed uh, for Linda, our first storyteller, and, uh, and, and, and Ms. Ann Van Perky, uh, and then now our officially um, Linda number one, 
genine number two, which naturally is a nice transition into number three of section one. And uh, I don't think anybody thinks that I'm playing any games here. They know that I go by the book, but I'll just show this just to be safe. Uh, you know what? There's a reason why I can't do that one. I need a blue one. Here we go. A blue one is Walt. Walt is in Florida. He's unmuted himself. All right, Walt, whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. <clears throat> this happened in uh, 1960 when I was in the seventh grade. I was 13 years old and I got in trouble for pornography. Yeah, I had found a comic book in my father's closet in a box that he brought back from World War II. He had been in France. And this comic book was like nothing I'd ever seen. It was a little strip of paper panels and it was Popeye. Only Popeye wasn't doing what Popeye normally does. No, no, he, this comic book gave new meaning to the word blow the man down. And Popeye, when he ate spinach, well, something else grew beside his muscles. And, and I, I had to take this to school to show my buddies. So I'm on the bus the next morning and I'm passing this comic around, this little comic, and everybody's having a laugh. And Ronnie, our bus driver, who's a high school senior football player, he comes back and he looks at it and he doesn't get upset. He, he likes it too. One of the girls saw it. When I get to school, I'm in the principal's office and my father's there and my father's embarrassed. And the principal says, where did you get this Tijuana Bible? Tijuana Bible, what the hell's a Tijuana Bible? This is imported from Mexico. It's pornography, it's illegal. My father says, I got it from another soldier in World War II. And, and I go home in disgrace, my father's shame. I'm grounded for a month. I'm kicked off the bus for the rest of the year and poor Ronnie loses a job. Well, a few months, a few years later, five years later, I'm a senior. And I go on a blind date with this girl and I go to her house and I look on the mail and there's a picture of Ronnie. It's, it's just his younger sister. And, and, and I don't think she ever knew the story of Popeye, but her mother gave me the dirtiest looks I've ever seen. Boom. Thank you all. In Florida, three storytellers have told their 99 second stories. And after the fourth, the next one, uh, Mary's going to summarize, and then you will have your first vote. Voting, I have found, Mary, and I don't know how you feel about this, is fun. It's super fun. There's something fun about voting for people. I agree. Um, I agree. So anyway, so yes, Linda number one, Janine number two, Walt number three. If you're at home, just whatever system you have as, as you watch, who am I going to vote for? Who's my favorite? And I will say this, we do want you to vote for the story more than the storyteller, because if your buddy's here, well, I get it. And there's probably nothing I can say to dissuade you from automatically voting for your friend, but in the, in, in, to try to be fair, I just feel like I have to say that. Yeah, but you know what? It's anonymous. What can we do? Vote for- Absolutely. What? Nobody's going to know. It's anonymous. I know. Storyteller number four, I hope you can see that okay, is Tori. Got it. What a round one, Tori. So it's February, 2021, and I'm working my very first volunteer shift, calling people on the phone in group 1A, booking appointments for the COVID vaccine. This is the best volunteer gig I've ever had. Every person I reach is so excited to hear from me. And when they realize that I can book the vaccine appointments, they start sharing my phone number with their friends. And my phone starts ringing and it's ringing. And every time I'm on the phone trying to book an appointment, my call waiting is beeping. And it's beeping so much, I'm having trouble hearing people. My first day on this job is nonstop. And every time I get through to that confirmation screen, it feels so good. Fast forward two months later, it's April. 2021. And I'm volunteering for the same group, making phone calls. But the reactions that I'm getting now are different. People in group 1A have now been offered the vaccine so many times. These phone calls are becoming a nuisance. People are annoyed at me. They're treating me like a telemarketer. And at the end of my shift, I feel exhausted. But then I remind myself that every time somebody hangs up on me, or cuts me off mid-sentence, 
or says, can you please take me off your calling list? That means that they already got their shot. And that feels so good. Boom. Boom to section one. Thank you, Tori. So Queen Mary, I've got great news. Yes. And you know what the news is, right? I do. No one went over. Nobody the- went over. Four of our tellers will be in the poll. Mary will do a summary. And then if technology is on my side, <laughs> we've had some good luck with this, I have to say, uh, we will have our first polling. Whenever you're ready, uh, Queen Mary. I am ready. All right. Linda's grandma went on a car adventure with her brand new Buick. Uh, Janine showed a very rude man what can happen when they send back a hamburger. Ooh. Walt got in trouble uh, for a Popeye comic book that was a bit racy and then ended up dating the bus driver's sister. And Tori, one of the best volunteer jobs she's had is getting people booked for the COVID vaccine appointment and didn't even mind when they hung up on her. All right. All right, I, I'm gonna save this poll. There's always a moment here, I have to tell you, when I, when, I, when I am about to launch the poll, I have to cross my fingers and say, I hope this bad boy works. All right, so to be clear, once again, we had, um, ooh. What's the matter? Hang on a second. I may have made a mistake. Do me a favor, uh, Mary. Yes, darling. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, y'all. Yeah, so we had Linda, Janine, Walt, and Tori, right? Yes. This is what happens when you don't clear prior or old polls. You have a bunch of them. And if you launch the wrong one, boy. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. I'm going to launch it right now. We should have everybody except for me and Mary can vote. Please, everyone vote. That's 40 people or more. We lost people? Hmm. 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 All right. We have got about three quarters. People are voting fast. They're not playing. No, they already know. Uh, the, if everybody votes, it could make a difference. There's at least one person who hasn't voted. Don't have to. We'll give it a few more seconds. No rush, right? No rush. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. And you know what? If this were live, like in a real theater, you wouldn't want dead air. No. But with Zoom, it's a little different, I've learned. People are home. They're doing their own thing. They're probably multitasking. That's all. So, hey, we'll give it another. Is it going to make a difference? I don't think it will. Up. Oh, whoop. <laughs> okay. I can end it, right? Yes, you can end it, love. I'm ending that poll. Okay. Great job, y'all. Section one is done. We do have a winner. And then Mary and I will put one or perhaps two additional tellers through that's uh what do we want to call that swag or power power we have we have that power yeah all right uh let us continue round oh excuse me not round two round one section two let us continue with the stories from how's my lighting it's terrible isn't it it's doing some things there no no i'll work on it and i'll work on it cheddar let me find you sir Mr. Cheddar, there he is. Whenever you're ready, take your time. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that I've had a number of jobs over the years, but none could have been more adventurous to me than my brief stint as a male exotic dancer in the Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I actually took the job on a dare and because I did need the money. You see, by day, I was a boring, stuffy, underpaid museum professional. But by night, I was the pole swinging dick dancer going by the name of Chocolate Blunder. And the only thing the two jobs had in common is that, well, I was very well exposed to the general public in both. And because this wasn't your typical part-time job, of course, I had to get a new wardrobe and accoutrements and a dance routine, which was done to the number one dance craze at the time. Macarena, Macarena, Macarena. Hey, Macarena. Now things were going well. And I was actually earning a lot of money until one night I ran into these two guys who took particular interest in me. So I finished doing my number and I got on the floor and started working the crowd where we struck up a conversation and um, turns out they were telling me they were from the area. 
Then one of them said, you know, I could have sworn I've seen you somewhere. Well, it turns out as the conversation got deeper, not only were they from the area, but they also knew my boss at the museum because they had grown up and gone to school with him. So on that night, I had to make the difficult decision to, well, retire my G-string and um, give up dancing. Boom. Boom. Cheddar. In, are you in Denver? Atlanta. Why did I think Denver? What, what is that about? Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. Well, we have uh, people from all over. That's what happened, Sean. Right. They're all over the place. Oh. Uh, someone's in Thailand right now. It's morning there. Uh, Cheddar, and a conversation for another day uh, after college. I lived in Hot Lana, which is what cheesy dudes like me called it at the time. Uh, nobody really gives a shit about this, Mary, but you know, I'm just trying to connect with people. You don't care. It's okay. I'm doing You're the best I can to make the human connection, okay? I'm, I'm with you, sir. <laughs> Let us continue. Great job, Cheddar. Great job, all of our tellers. Section two, teller two is going to be in Massachusetts. I think I'm working. I think I've got my lighting a little bit better here. I am such a noob, Mark. Mr. Mark Modrow, where are you, sir? Hang on. If Mark talks, we can find him. I'm right here. There he is. <clears throat> Take your time. I'm in eighth grade in the library. I've been staring at the same page of this book for like half an hour because I am so mad I literally cannot see straight. It's starting to get soggy. Frankly, it's starting to stink. Jeff has been spitting on it and me for the last half an hour. Jeff is like the meanest bully in school. At 13, he's 5'9", 140 some pounds. He's got this rabid weasel kind of vibe going. Teachers are scared of him. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been his target. I never knew why. I mean, it's not like we had the same friends, same classes. The only thing we had in common was the wrestling team. Now, wrestling is like the team sport for kids who don't play well with others. And when you get your bully from the wrestling team, you always know exactly how much bigger he is. Jeff is 50% bigger than me. One night in practice, Jeff is sick. And I jump the line. I take a match for him so he can rest. And he leaves me alone after that. Decades later, I'm talking to an old friend. I say, you know, whatever happened to Jeff? And he says, Jeff's doing double life. He killed somebody, then he killed a prison guard. And I was like, oh, well, it's nice to see some kids get to live out their dreams. Boom. Mark, boom. Mary, thank you, Mark. So we've had uh, Cheddar in Atlanta. Mark, I believe he's in Massachusetts. I believe he's in the Boston area. Uh, may not be very far from you, Mary. I don't know. Little, he's about uh, 45 minutes from me. Oh, is that right? I think yeah. he's west of you. You're yeah, it's a bit of a hike. Yeah. You're a bit. You're in the urban area more. I am. I'm five miles out of Boston. And yeah. Mark is more in the suburban area. Yes. Yes. Fine. Great job, everybody. Massachusetts so, boy, yes. What's that? Massachusetts. Got to have a lot of pride, right? You got to have a lot of pride in your state and in your city. That's right. Um, this is why it's hard for me living in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. <laughs> I don't really feel the way I should feel. I'm trying. It's been a decade. Uh, it's, at some point, you got to just say it's probably not going to happen, right? Oh, you might you might have fallen in love with it already if you were going to. But this is, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. All right. Next up, uh, we're making a beeline over to the Chai Town, the Windy City. It's got all kinds of nicknames. We will find him. I'm here. Hey, Jeff. Spotlight. Take your time. It's a Saturday night and I'm stuck as a 13 year old at my grandparents doing all the thank you notes for my bar mitzvah. All 400 of them. This is the last thing I ever wanna do on a Saturday night. And my grandmother, God bless her, I love her to death, is the sweetest lady in the world but she's playing the ultimate guilt trip because she's so sweet that I feel like I have to do this. I finally get to one, Maureen. 
Maureen is the woman who works with my grandfather at his business. And she looks at it and she kind of has a weird look. And we start to talking and somewhere I make a joke about the fact that, well, it's not like they're having an affair together or anything. And that's when there's a minute of silence. She kind of tries to cover it up. But at 13, you kind of know when you have those moments, then things are different. I idolized my grandfather. He was one of my favorite people. But at that moment, the idolization stopped. It was never the same again. He hurt my grandmother. And it's something I always remembered and I never forgot. Boom. Jeff Stein bringing it from Chicago, Miss Queen Mary. Uh, I'll tell you what, I don't know how you feel. And I do want to hear what you, I want to hear how you feel. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a feelings guy, right? You are. I know you are. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in section one or section two. No, absolutely. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Mm -hmm. The stories are really strong yeah. as they typically are. Uh, we have one more teller in section two. And then we will, uh, you will, you will do your, what you do as well as anybody arguably in the world, which is summarized. Thank you. Not yeah. the only thing you do really well, but that's one thing you do very, very well. Okay. Yes, I'm known for that here. Right yeah, here. it seems like you've got like a, yeah, it's almost like a, a legendary thing you're building. And uh, we've got one more teller and then we'll do the poll. Cool? Cool. I so love far, it. So good. That. Next up, Eva, let me find you. If I, if I pronounce your name wrong, apologies. EVA, just to be sh safe. And Ms, just to be safe. There she is. I'll spotlight you. Take your time. Marsha P. Johnson was not a drag queen. You know, my friend, her debut as Latina, the red dress, perfect. The ground, she spikes in heels. The lips just so in sync. Quizás, quizás, quizás. Her legs prepped for revelation. Her eyelashes sling and rise, casting us in a spell as woman of uncanny magic. We savor among ourselves. The level focus of her gaze, like a mama lion with a hip sway. The tilt of her head, the fan over her shoulder, the crowd goes wild. See, in this space, we can be one. She suffers for it, she says. But look, Latina hits the sweet spot and the nerve. I have a red dress. I don't wear it. I have heels. I can dance in them. But outside this space, it has historically not ended well. For this diamond clip of time, Latina defies the violence she knows so close. I can smell it. She delivers interbeing. It's a risk she takes for joy. Revel in that. I do. Boom. Thank you, Eva. Uh, she, and Eva is a first time storyteller here to the 99. And she says, boom. What do you think of that, Mary? <laughs> I was listening when we were talking about you it. You don't have to do it. No. Nobody's going to make you do it. But hey, why not? Exactly. It's clear. It's easy. It's one syllable. It clearly says my story's over. Mm -hmm. um, so Next. thank you very much for that. That is the end of section two. And I am happy once again. You know why, Mary? Because no one went over time. Nobody went over time, which means, which means that uh, every, all the tellers, by the way, I hope you're seeing the chat and the love Lots of compliments, them. among other things, flowing your way. Mary will uh, do what she does as well as anybody perhaps in uh, the world, which is to summarize, and then I will launch the poll. Mary, whenever you are ready. All right. So all I have to say for Chetta's story is chocolate blunder. Chocolate blunder? <laughs> yeah. He was an exotic dancer by night, museum executive by day. Those worlds collided. Chocolate blunder. Mark found out his eighth grade bully did a double life uh, when he was uh, at when he got older. Mm -hmm. So the bully got in trouble. Yep. Um, Jeff lost the idolization of his granddad when 
some information came out when he was 13 years old, writing thank you notes for his bar mitzvah. And Eva, she talked about Latina who did, whose risk, the risk she takes created joy. All right, let me just finish up this poll here. I will remind people that if for whatever reason you didn't get a chance to hear all the storytellers, don't vote, just to be fair. So it would make the most sense that to, to vote, you would have heard all of them. Presumably everyone here has, but you might've come a little bit late. A couple of people did. And uh, every Harry, you for yourself. You what's can't, that? Storytellers can vote for themselves. Yes, everybody votes. If I were you, I'd vote for myself, but you might not be that person. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. No. Mary, uh, would you please for Jeff, give me another keyword other than grandfather so that this poll is very clear. Thank you notes. Okay, thank you. All right, I do believe we are uh, set with that one. I shall launch it and 45 people, including all the storytellers. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you told the story, that includes you. <laughs> Uh, you get to vote if Sean can find it. Cheddar, Mark, Jeff, and Ava. We're launching. Vote away. Such good stories, Mary. I know. They're... Is now the time I pour the drink or should I wait? No, I think you should pour the drink. You've been working hard. Why wouldn't you pour the drink? Well, somebody's got to hold down the ship. I, you, should, you can do it, right? I can. If you're pouring oh, a drink, I can hold down the show. You know what I'll do? Uh -huh. uh, after round one, yeah. people are voting. We need all the votes count. We still got about nine nine people could vote. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's tough. They're trying to figure out which one they're going to vote for. Between round one and round two, we're going to hear a little bit from our tellers in their lives. Very brief little blurbs about perhaps stuff they want to talk about, plug and things like that. And then I'll plug a little bit myself, you know? You why not? Be. And you too, right? Of course. Of course. Uh, I am going to close this poll number two of section number two in round one because we do have a winner. Do you agree with me, Mary? I think I think we do, yeah. Awesome. Uh, there have been a few people. I don't get to see all of the chats, the messages, but people are responding to my comments about Chapel Hill. Yes. Uh, they liked it. They've been here. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, et cetera, and so on and so on. So I just wanted to address that. It is a lovely, lovely place to reside. Uh, it, it, if you've heard the idea or the expression, no matter where you go, there you are, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps that's what we're really talking about here. It is. See? You know what I mean? Yes. It doesn't matter if you're in Boston or Atlanta mm -hmm. or Chicago or anywhere else, Mary. Yeah, it's true. We're all together here on Zoom. Round one, section three. Eight storytellers done. None went over time. Eight more to go. We will then make announcements. Mm -hmm. At some point before then, I probably will We'll pour some Uncle Nearest with a couple of ice cubes. Absolutely. First teller of section three, Barbara. Where, Barbara, where are you? Right here. There you are. Do you see me? Yeah. Take your time. Okay. Thanks for finding us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, um, somebody who is also in it, Nadia, is from our Chicago storyteller group, and she told me about it, and I thought that sounds like fun. So, awesome! Thank you. <laughs> I kind of call this Barb versus the tornado, but I knew that was going to happen, and I did it anyway. Uh, this is like a perfect epitaph for me because I take a lot of risks that. Can be classified as anywhere from foolhardy to breathtakingly stupid. Uh, case in point, on a hot and stormy July afternoon, I'm being bored to restlessness in my job as a manager at, at a backyard nature store and decide to play a little midday hooky and go shoe shopping. As I approach the mall in my truck, I see a ginormous funnel cloud that is, its mouth is suspended about 30 feet from the ground. And while everybody whose common sense is still intact is like going that way, I drive right into its path and I get out of my truck. And as it goes low and slow over me, I kind of look up into it and I see flashing lights, like twinkling colored lights. And I realize it's the water vapor in the cloud that's making the lightning look like twinkling lights. Then it occurs to me, I don't think I should be here. So I get back in the truck, go to behind an apartment building right there, and then 
a microburst comes and the rain comes and my car is being dribbled like a giant Michael Jordan is just whacking on it. And then it passes. And now I want my tombstone to read, I don't think I should be here. Boom. Boom. Thank you, Barbara. Where are you, Chicago? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mary, one of, uh, I think, four first time 99 storytellers here. They've probably been telling stories for years, but not everybody knows about me or this event. Um, it takes time. It takes time to grow, right? It does. Uh, but, but yeah. So uh, thank you. And there was something else I wanted to share with you, Mary. Uh, oh, what it was, was I did sneak off. I was multitasking. I just feel like I, I have to be transparent during uh, that story. I did sneak off and pour myself that Uncle Nero's. That's, that's I did it. I was listening to Barbara's story. I was timing Barbara's story. And I've been doing this long enough. <laughs> I was able to do that. So great job, y'all. Uh, thank you for supporting me in my alcoholism. Appreciate it. OK, let's move on. Always making it awkward, aren't I? It's, you know, it's always making it awkward. These are things we have to talk about after, Sean. Yes. Okay. yes. Hey, it's Easter, Passover, whatever. Hey. Right. Have your drink. Right. Uh, Billy from the Peruvian hat, next up, live from the Toronto area, is Brian. I'm right here. There you go. Boom. Take your time, man. Okay. Tomorrow is the anniversary of my mother's passing away, and I was thinking about the special bonds we have with people, especially with our parents. I was not in Toronto when she died. I was in Manzaneo, Mexico, with my soon-to-be wife, ex-wife Vivienne, and we were out on a paddle boat. We went out early enough so we wouldn't be caught in the noonday sun, and as we're paddling back to the resort, I, I noticed the paddle boat, the other one that was out, has flipped over, and the women are in the water, and I go over to help save them. And I helped move the boat to a beach across from the resort and we're waving at the resort, come over, save us, save us. And they take a motorboat and they save the women and leave me to take the paddle boat back on my own in the hot burning sun. And I'm burning up, I get to the resort, I have some aqua minerale, I go back to my room, it's about four o'clock. And all of a sudden I'm starting to shake because of the heat, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. I go in the room, I lie down, I relax, everything's fine. We go to dinner and then after that, we win the contest where you have to pass the balloon between your two bodies without using your hands. And we get a bottle of tequila. We go back to the room. The phone is ringing. There's a call for me in, my, in the lobby and it's my sister and my mom is dead. It takes me a day and a half to get back to Toronto. I get there two hours before the funeral. And then at the Shiva, I ask about how it happened. And I find out my mother died at the exact moment my body was shaking. So was it the heat or was it that special bond? I'll let you decide. Boom. Boom from Toronto. Thank you, Brian. Mary, we had two storytellers uh, tell their 99s, Barbara and Brian. You yes. can't plan an all B section. No. It's a coincidence. If people push back, I understand. Uh, but sometimes it happens that way. Yes, it's the hat. You, be you, you believe uh, in sort of spiritual things. I do. All right. So uh, maybe yes. there's no coincidences. I don't know. That's what they say. Who says that? They. Who is they? <laughs> All of them. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Next up, <laughs> West Coaster. Let's find Michael. Give him a big old spotlight. Take it away whenever you're ready. Michael, I think we need to see your video. So where are you? Oh, that's Let's see. Not Michael. Did it come up? There you are. Yeah, we had a spotlight correctly. <laughs> there we go. I had a little issue there. No okay. Problem. I hope everybody on this call is lucky enough to have that kid's vacation place. For me, that was Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. And my grandfather would rent a, co uh, a cottage on, on, it was literally on the beach on a little dead end road. And all the family would come up there. We'd be there for a couple of weeks or a month. When I was 10, my grandmother brought uh, my dad a, uh, a gift of two metal detector kits. 
and they were kits at the time from Radio Shack, uh, probably each with about 200 pieces. And she promptly ordered him that he would spend half of his vacation putting, soldering all the, re, all the capacitors and resistors to make his two sons these great metal detectors for the beach. And of course, as kids, 10 and my brother was six, we were running around every few hours saying, hey, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? And so this went on for, like I said, about half the vacation. And on the first night, that the vacation on the first halfway through the vacation when it finished up we ran out there with our metal detectors with all the other enthusiasts and we came back with a pile of bottle caps the second night uh, uh my dad came out onto the porch and gathered everybody at happy hour and said hey why don't you go check around the parking meters along the beach where there's sand i'll bet people dropped coins there so we went around there and sure enough we found piles of treasure quarters nickels and dimes all over the place we thought that was great every day of the vacation we gathered at happy hour and did that so a few hours ago, a few a few years ago, when my dad was starting to deal with his dementia, and uh, and then uh, uh, and so so he, my I was telling the story, and my mom reminded me that that uh, <coughs> hey, um, Mike, uh, no, your dad went out there to make a good happy hour and put all those dimes and quarters there, and so he just passed away last week, and I just think he's a nice man. Boom! Oh, I, I did it. <laughs> Boom. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, man. You did it, dude. Some of those stories are tough stories to tell, Mary. I always admire anybody who's willing to tell. Yeah. So thank you for that. And all of our storytellers, of course. Great yeah. job. Thanks, Michael. Uh, good seeing you again, man. Um, all right. Let us move on to, to storyteller number four of section three. Madeline, we're going back up north of the border. Uh, Madeline, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spot can you hear my me? I can hear you perfectly, and you take your time, young lady. Okay, I will. Growing up, Stanhope Beach on Prince Edward Island is a favorite destination. The sand is fine. The waves are perfect for body surfing. The water is not too cold. A bonus for me is my buddy Noel from home has a cottage nearby. And uh, sometimes we're there at the same time. At night, kids gather around a fire and uh, play music. One night, Noel and I break from the group and we walk down the beach. He's a big guy. We laugh and talk all the time. It's super fun. He says to me, have you ever been skinny dipping? I say, no, but I will if you promise not to look. I have no desire to see naked Noel. Okay, so he promises and we take off all our clothes and we jump into the ocean. It's, it's a wonderful experience to be floating around in the waves. The, the moon is bright and below the surface, I can see the tan lines from my bikini, but then I look deep. And it's really dark. And I imagine the shark from Jaws about to eat the swimmer. And I say, I've got to get out. And I say, no, just don't look, okay? Back at the fire, I relax. I, I mentioned that. I comment on how the moon is beautiful. The, the music is beautiful. Noel says, oh, yeah, that moon really was beautiful. And then I realize, Noel, you promised not to look. He laughs and says, yeah, but I lied. Boom. All right. Thank you, Madeline. In, uh, in Quebec, I believe. Yeah. Now. I I went. Yeah. I went over. Madeline. I know. You went over. Oh, I know. You know what? You know I don't. You you know why I'm upset. Well, one I, I always I want I love I love your style and I want you to compete, but now who looks like the bad guy, Mary? It's always me. I know the bad guy. All right, so Madeline, we can't put your name. That's okay. But next time. Yeah, next. well, we'll see. All right. All right, Mary, please uh, summarize Barbara, Brian, and Michael. We will launch poll number three. You got it. You got it. So Barbara versus the tornado, and she realized she didn't think she should be here when she went up against a weather thing happening. Mm -hmm. Brian 
started shaking and was it because of the heat or because his mom had passed away at that exact moment mm -hmm. we're not sure mm -hmm. and then michael they say that coins come from heaven but his dad made sure that coins were coming during happy hour while he was vacationing up at hampton beach got it i'm going to uh save this and you don't need all the inner workings of it we will launch poll number three section number three we have up to 45 people who can vote. Please vote. And then we will go to section number four. And those four storytellers obviously have been waiting patiently and they will vote. Uh, again, Barbara, uh, Brian. And by the way, I apologize, Brian. I spelled Brian's name B-R-A-I-N-E. It is Brian, to be clear. He is number two. Uh, it's, it should be very obvious. And uh, Michael. That voids the free trade agreement. Yes, fair. <laughs> Brain. Just brain. to be clear, brain is Brian. Brain is Brian. That's never been happened before. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jays beat the Yankees two games to one. Just want to let you know that. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. All right, let us get, we have about five, four more people that could vote. Please vote. And I think we have a winner here. We do. We do. We do. All right, cool. Let's end this bad boy, move on to our final section of round number one. We will take uh, not really a break after the next section. Uh, the tellers will have a chance to plug, as will I, as will Mary. Uh, but that would also be an opportunity if you wanted to slip away, which of course you could do during the show. No one's going to know. But if you do want to vote, I want you to hear all the stories. So either be watching or listening or something which would make you be fair to vote. Right. Am I right? I agree. Seems like, reasonable. You're gonna pour a drink and then you just gotta listen. That's all. Yeah, that's it. All right, let's move on. Final section. Four more tellers. Great story so far. Going back to the great windy city of Chicago. Let's find Mr. Dan Boyd. Whoa, boom. Wait, I'm not done yet. Sure. Take time. Uh, I'm hanging out in the kitchen with my significant other and we're casually chatting when she cuts me off to say, I'm going to go take a quick power shower. And as she's walking past me to go to the bathroom, she's giving me this look of just abject disdain that makes absolutely no sense to me. And I explain that it makes no sense to me by giving her this face. And she says, do you realize that English is my second language? And I'm out here casually dropping rhymes on you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it's one of the many reasons your genius is why I love you. And she squints at me and she says, you know what? You can't even speak in Japanese, let alone rhyme in it. And I'm like, yeah, and rhyming in Japanese is supposed to be easy. And she sort of scoffs and goes into the bathroom and then she shuts the door and then she opens it and pops her head out. And she says, wait a second, did I screw up L and R? It's two R's, right? And I, <laughs> yeah, it's two R's, you, you got it right. And she goes, I know, I'm a genius, boom. Boom, Dan Boy, Chicago. All right, Queen Mary, that was, Dan was the first teller of section four in round one. Again, we will have five to six tellers who move on to the second round. All of them will be in our Grand Slam in two weeks on April 18th. But only three of them are, are walking home with a little dough this evening. And one will be considered the season three, slam three champion. And there's a lot, a lot. I mean, that's, it's a coveted position, right? It is. People Absolutely. want that. They do. All right. Next up, right. back in on your neck of the woods, I think, or actually not to your state anyway. Yes. Angela. Hello. Hey, take your time. We're gonna hope that Phineas stays down. Okay. <laughs> Let me get my timer. <clears throat> All 
I'm in the corner of a ballroom and I'm sobbing. I can't walk through a room of 600 people. I can't run to the bathroom like this is the high school dance. I can only try to be very, very small. I'm working for a dance company and this is our gala. There are women in ball gowns and diamonds, men in tuxedos and impeccably polished shoes. I see a woman lead a frail man to the dance floor by his hand and they're swaying, but when I look at his face, he seems scared and confused. And I've seen this look before on my grandfather's face. My factory working, oil changing, Philadelphia Phillies loving grandpa was my first dance partner. My grandparents had a hi-fi in the corner of a paneled living room that took up an entire corner of the room. And Pop-Up would put albums on and, and we would dance. I would put my feet on top of his thick-soled work shoes and we would dance around the room. I didn't cry when he died because by the time Alzheimer's took him, he was gone long already. I once went to went visit Pop in the nursing home and I leaned in to kiss him and he pulled away because I scared him. He didn't know who I was. And it was the same look I saw on his face that I saw on the dance floor that night. I might not have cried for my grandfather when he died, but I cried for him that night in the ballroom when I just was a little girl who missed dancing with her grandpa with her feet on his dusty work shoes. Thank you. Boom. All right, Angela up in Massachusetts. Dan Teller one in section four was in Chicago. Mary, you know, others know I am, I don't know if the word's obsessed with, but certainly interested in and consumed by location. You are. I think uh, obsessed is a good word. Is it? Is it? <laughs> Hats. Yes. Whiskey and location is a weird combination, isn't it? Oh. It's just, it's just the, the beginning, Sean. We get to know you more and more as we go on. Yeah, I mean, tonight you probably have never seen my microwave, but hey, there you go. But we've seen it now. There you go. Yeah. Let us in. It's a piece of shit, by the way. <laughs> uh, next up, Anu in uh, Iowa, the great, great state of Iowa. Um, you will unmute yourself and take your time. I'm just gonna start my yeah. uh, timer so I know what I'm doing. So recently I restarted my practice of meditation to manage my stress. I'm stressed because I'm in the process of getting a divorce from my husband of 20 years, 19. Anyway, so I sat up on the couch straight, put my palms up and turned on the app and got comfortable to start meditating. Nothing happened because there was a cat on my lap a dog snuggling next to me and another dog licking my open palms. I was so annoyed. Can I not get 10 minutes to meditate? Then I started playing with the pets and I was grateful because they could tell that I was upset and they were trying to support me. And the other reason I was grateful was the little fur ball purring on my lap, Kajal. Kajal has been with us for 18 years and has a front row seat for all the events in my life. As a little kitten, she immediately bonded with my husband and not me. And she would attack me from behind doors and catch my, bright my feet. She would, if I was wearing a long skirt, she would attack me and jump and try to get it. It wasn't fair. I was the one who wanted a cat, not even him. When he moved out eight months ago, she quickly transferred her affection to me, followed me like a dog, and I couldn't sit anywhere without her getting on my lap and purring. These moments are extra special because last night we had to put Kajal down. As me and my almost ex were saying goodbye to her, we were crying for her and I was crying for our marriage too. Boom. Boom, Anu, Iowa, thank you. Uh, 15th of 16th uh, storyteller, it's funny. We, I mean, we were talking, uh, chat. <laughs> Anu, this won't make any sense. Somebody that I was thinking you might be the final storyteller. We had chatted about that. Uh, inside joke. All right, not great TV. Uh, final storyteller of this evening, and uh, she's the only one. I don't know why I always say this. She's the only one who knew for sure when she was going. She had a little bit of a prep time because, I mean, nice. she's just process of elimination. She's been very patient. Uh, her name is Francesca. I hope my pronunciation is uh, accurate or near accurate. And when we find her, if she's still with us, 
Yes, I'm here. I hope she is. Where is she? Then we'll spotlight her. There she is. And uh, we'll listen to her story. Thanks, Francesca. <clears throat> Thank you. The fall of 1991, I am in my third week of wearing pajamas all day, every day. Not a fashion statement, a standoff. It's hard to say who's winning. My husband for not noticing that I am wearing pajamas or me for not pointing out, have you noticed that I am still wearing pajamas? My mother said I came into this world with white gloves on. I put clothes on to be effortless, not to match so much as compliment. How did I become this woman who stubbornly wears pajamas to the grocery store? It's 6 a.m. My husband has already left for work. He won't be home until after dark when I'm putting the kids to bed. My three-year-old son, Ryland, crawls into bed with me. I turn away from him so he doesn't know that I'm crying. He puts his little arm under and around my neck. His hand brushes against my chapped lips. He then licks the fingers of his other hand and very gently wipes his fingers across my dry lips. In that moment, I think I have never known such pure love. In that moment, I realize my son deserves the mother he was born to, the one who gives a damn about how she dresses. It takes time to find the courage to leave the father of your children, about six months. On the day I said goodbye, I was wearing a nice pair of blue jeans and a simple cotton top. Boom. Thank you, Francesca. Chicago, right? Uh, I go back and forth between Chicago and Bloomington, Indiana. But okay, all right. I'll be in Chicago permanently as of July. I I go through uh, Chapel Hill and uh, uh, no, I don't go anywhere actually. <laughs> I, I, I want to go somewhere. Yeah. Good job, y'all. Great job to all of our tellers. Uh, final round: Dan, Angela, Anu, and Francesca. And guess what, Mary? Nobody went over. So. Whenever you're ready, please summarize and we will do our final poll of round one. And then we will do a little break and announcements and then announce our second rounders. We're making great time, by the way, and you're doing great. Thank Fantastic. You. You're doing great, Sean. Thank you. Yes. So Dan learned that the language of love, um, even if there's problems with language, can work everything out between a couple. Angela uh, wept for her pop um, because disease had taken him and someone else. Uh, that she saw dancing in the ballroom. Uh, Anu uh, lost her little kitty and then worked out feeling about her marriage during that time. And meditation is always good. And then Francesca, they say clothes make the woman. And she made sure those clothes made her when she left her husband. All right, I'm gonna um, just finish up here. Okay. And just to be clear, can you, can you please repeat Francesca's blurb? I said, clothes make the woman. And she was dressed when she left her husband. <laughs> All right. <laughs> These blurbs are hard. Mary's very good at this. I'm not as good as you will see. I do believe I got everyone's name right. Hopefully the spelling this time. Apologies to Brian again. <laughs> um, he's a very forgiving type of guy. Accepted. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? I so, said, apology accepted. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we've got Dan, Angela, Anu, Francesca. I'm gonna launch this poll and 45 people can vote. I hope you do. And uh, tellers and others read the chat because there's a lot of interesting comments coming through. Yeah. Here we go. Uh -huh. All right, okay. Interest. This, is a, this might be the closest one I can tell right away. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Keep on voting, y'all. We got uh, several more people. We'll keep it open for like another 15 seconds or so. I think we have a winner. Yeah, we do. We do. I would agree we with that. Do so we can close this poll. What are your um, sort of overall general takeaways from round one, Mary? We've had some folks be really vulnerable tonight and it's just amazing that they feel comfortable enough to do that here. So I'm very, I'm very grateful for that, that they just put it all out there on the table. As they say, leave it on the table. Agreed. Leave it on Love the Zoom. It. 
Love the vulnerability, love the uh, the range and style of stories, all within the 99 framework, but you can do a lot within that. Yeah, uh, that's I mean, look at some of the stories, we, all the stories we had. Uh, yeah. if, and, and if you go back one year, and that was before I was doing anything with the 99, I'm noticing everyone is understanding lighting a little bit better. <laughs> we and to some degree, <laughs> I'm not maybe, I've actually regressed, but um, the audio and the lighting is a little bit better. We're still, we're still like Zoom weird. Uh, so what we'll do is I will give the 16 storytellers an opportunity to do a really quick plug, maybe put a link in the chat. Now understand it's gonna fly up the chat, uh, but you do have an opportunity on the, uh, if you're uh, someone watching us this evening to save the chat. So there's ways that we can deal with that. So it might be easiest, Mary, what do you think of this? We haven't done it this way before where if we ask the tellers and I'll put them up gallery for me to put their hand up with a little icon and then I could call on people. Yeah, I think that So works. just so that for our audience, we're gonna do this for about five, maybe six minutes. Teller plugs, Mary and I have a couple of things we're gonna plug. Actually, I shouldn't speak for Mary, I know I do. And uh, this would also be a good opportunity, maybe, you know, quick, quick bathroom break, a drink break. All right, I see Brian has his hand up. Uh, I see several people. So Brian, let's start with you, plug away. All right, um, as we do once a month, but that's another story.ca, which is on next Sunday night. Uh, it's 7.30 out of Toronto. We have a great lineup. Some people who you know, including uh, Paula Flalo, Ophira Ensberg, John Paul, and Tori, Andrew. Shelfo uh, and Crystal Bartelli, who is making to the finals. So that's next Sunday night, 7.30 out of Toronto, money going to student success. Thank you. Yes, you and yes, Crystal's going to our Grand Slam. Tori Shine in Pittsburgh. Great, hi. Um, so I wanted to invite you all to my show. It's called Mashed Poetatoes. It is poetry inspired by improv, inspired by poetry. Um, so it's a free show, streams once a month. Next one is April 17th. Uh, and I just put the link in the chat. Um, you can also check out Mashed Poetatoes on Facebook. So please come check it out. Um, thanks, Tori. Uh, let's go with Dan in Chicago. Hey. hey. Uh, tomorrow, we've got uh, an anniversary show. And we're making it an April Fool's show. And we'll be teaching a lesson on storytelling and you'll be able to critique that lesson. I love critiquing. <laughs> I will critique the shit out of you if you give me that opportunity. I'm so um, excited. Not the, <laughs> yes, I know you can't wait for that. But definitely not your story here because you know, wh why would I do that? It was great. Everybody's great. Jeff Stein. So when, uh, so when you're done tonight, as Sean can tell you, I'm going to hop over to Clubhouse for Sunday Night Stories that starts at 9.30 Central Time. We're going to have four storytellers and should be a lot of fun. So if you want to pop on by, the link is in the chat. And if you are on Clubhouse, feel free to pop on by tonight. Uh, that's tonight at, I think, 10.30 Eastern. 10.30 Eastern. 9.30 Central. I was on it last week. Yes, uh, you that were. That was fun. And um, yeah. Cool. Who else? I don't see any other hands. So if I missed you, just unmute yourself and say something. Uh, Eva and then Barbara. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Hang on one sec. Eva and then Barbara. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'll uh, put this in the chat. I've I've got a book, a collection of uh, poems wow. called I Did the Art to oh, beautiful. Uh, the Lost Grit. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got. <laughs> cool. Um, Barbara. Um, yes. Um, I am going to be telling, um, on August 15th, I'll be telling a story with Soul Stories Live. Yeah. And, and then on the weekend of October 22nd to 24th with the National Storytelling Network, I have a 30-minute story with the theme of spooked. And what I do want to put in, I do a lot of open mics and um, I do one in Boston. We've got great ones here in Chicago. And if you don't mind, I do want to, if I can... This is going to be, okay, is that the only one that came through? There's a huge amount of them. But um, I would like to say anybody can come to Scott Whitehair's open mics at DNS Chicago. Do not submit. 
he has another storytelling uh, venue called Telling Favorites. And every month it's a different favorite something. I just did a favorite song one, two weeks ago. And um, there's just so much opportunity. The Boston Group is a story space. They've been around since 1989 or something. Awesome people. So there's just so many venues out there. And I've seen Jeff and Nadia and, and a lot of these people. Jeff, I, I think you were in class with me with Scott. I'm not sure. Anyway, so. All right, cool. Thank did you I, very did much I get for everything sharing in? all that. I don't think I did. They're not, <laughs> put it in the <laughs> chat. Is that okay? I will, I will. You, Sorry. Yeah, put it in the chat to everyone. Yeah, make, make sure, sure if you want to, if you want everyone to see it, make sure within the chat, it says everyone, not everybody knows Zoom stuff so well. There you go. Uh, anybody else? Hands up real quick. I don't want to take too, too much more time. I hope our, I'm seeing you Cheddar one sec. Um, and then the only thing I'll say, Cheddar, you go and then I'll go. I don't think Ma Queen Mary has anything she wants to announce. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Next month I'll be with Telling with the Portland Storytellers Guild on May 1st, Saturday, May 1st. I put info in the chat. Awesome. Thank you. And I will say that the only thing I want to say is a huge thank you, obviously, again, uh, to Mary and our audience and our tellers. Uh, I will put in the chat, and I know there's a lot going on in the chat. There's a way to save it, by the way. If you see, it says file, and there's three little buttons or three little, what do you call those? Not buttons. The dots. Yeah. Uh, I the think the settings, the settings will allow you to save it if you want to. I know there's a lot of links. What I'm going to put just two links. One is a Facebook link to the group where I house the events, among other things, it's called Grit. If you're not a part of that and you want to be a member, uh, it's considered a member, uh, it, you'll be just be notified more easily. And uh, the other thing is my Venmo. It's not a, a business Venmo. Uh, optional. If you're inspired and you, if you've gotten here this evening and you just say, man, this Sean guy is just, I just want to send some more money to this guy. He <laughs> needs more money. Uh, for whatever your motivation is, I'll put he it does, there. Really. Yeah, no. microwave. I gave him five bucks, but I want to give him like way more. Then there's a way to do it, but no pressure. If you're here, you're here. And I'm glad you're here. All right. Uh, our tellers have told their stories, Mary. It is not 817. Let's announce our six tellers going to the second round. Right. Let us say, and no bullshit, those are some really good effing stories. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we're going to say six names. And in truth, we could probably say six more names. And yeah, I mean, it, some of it's yeah. a little bit of luck of the draw. It is what it is. Yep. Uh, these six tellers, if they're available, will be in our Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. The other tellers, uh, please stick around. I want you to hear these stories and vote. Oh, please. I know you've worked hard on these. Uh, but I encourage you just to continue and help this community grow and there will be more slam. So in no particular order, the six people going through are Michael up in the Pacific Northwest, Cheddar down in the Hotlanta area, Tori in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania region of the country, Mark, who is somewhere west of Queen Mary, Anu, who has got a house between corn somewhere or wheat and and first timer Francesca who uh, hangs out in both Bloomington and Chicago depending on her moods <laughs> those are our six tellers going through and for the what is it the 10 who aren't going through thank you you did a great job amazing just that simple amazing um you can formally complain to me privately <laughs> if you feel something was a little unfair or unclear. Look, we're always tweaking this process, I'm trying to make it better and better, tighter and tighter, and we'll continue to do that. Cool. 45 people are still here. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to pour a drink, relieve yourself, yes. put your dog uh, at least in the bedroom or yes. your spouse in the bedroom. Or on your lap. And if the dog is on your lap, please put him to the camera or her to the camera now. If you have a pet right now, it'd be a good time to highlight your pet. Right. We'd love to see your cats, your dogs, your hamsters and others. Whatever. So just know that. <laughs> I assume the six people whose names I called are ready to tell their second story. So these six names will go back in the hat, which is from Peru. Yes. I don't think we knew that. Correct. Well, that's why I'm sharing it again. Well, thank you. 
and we will have an opportunity for these six tellers to tell. We will have a champion. We will have top three get money. We will then unmute ourselves. And for those that want to stick around, we can have a little Q and A. And who knows how crazy it might get. Number one, round, yes. Let's get ready for round two. Francesca, I'm spotlighting you. No, you're the star. Take your time. Hang on one sec, Francesca. I want to make sure everybody is muted. Hang on. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah. You're ready. I am ready. Can you hear me? Because I got mixed messages there. Sure. No problem. Hang on one sec. Yep. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. I'm getting ready for bed. My husband, Pep, died five years ago, and I'm almost used to the quiet of living alone. When I hear a shuffle, I close the drawer. There it is again, louder. I freeze in place. My heart rate speeds. I'm taking breath in, but forgetting to let breath out. Where? What? A possum? A rat? A squirrel? I start to cry. It is way too late to call my neighbor and ask her help. I leap onto my, my bed like a little girl escaping the clutches of the boogeyman. The fact that I am a good distance from where I think the sound is coming from is of no comfort. The idea that an animal can come scurrying out and go over my bare feet has me in a cold sweat. There it is again. It's moved. The motherfucker has moved and is now in my bathroom walls. I start to scream. I scream because I am stupidly afraid of rodents. I scream because I no longer have my husband here to chase the rodent out for me. I have to get past this. I have to face my fear. I jump from my bed and grab my balancing bar. I am the Furies personified. And I start banging the wall with my bar, banging directions to whatever rodent is in the wall, out. Silence. The rodent has escaped my fury. I have conquered my fear. <laughs> Pep would be so proud of me. Boom. Boom, Francesca. Uh, Chicago slash Bloomington, uh, round two, Mary, teller number one. And if uh, I haven't said this already, this is the third slam of season three and our grand slam mm -hmm. will be in two weeks. You'll be there, right? I will totally be there. Hello, everything. with a the manicure and everything. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. And I don't think we've lost anyone. So tellers have not said, hey, I'm out, which I appreciate. I Because if you're building community, that's part of it. Right. You know, look, slams can be a little competitive and everybody wants to win. I get it. I do. Yeah. If you've ever been to a slam with me when I was competing and I didn't win, you know, I understand that. I am not a pleasant man, but I'm not in that role this evening. And this uncle nearest is really quite good. Let's oh, move on. Delightful. <laughs> You're not drinking anything tonight? Uh, I'm drinking a Waterloo grapefruit. That's what I'm drinking. Wow. All right. Yeah, it's the hard stuff. You stay in your lane, I'll stay in mine, right? Yes, darling. We work well okay. together, no matter what. Teller number two, live from Pittsburgh, is uh, Tori Shine. Let's find Tori and, uh, and Spotlight her. There she is. Take your time, Tori. So I'm halfway through college, and I've got this killer summer internship. And I'm running late for work, and my car battery is dead. I definitely don't have time to call AAA. So I grab a pair of jumper cables and I'm waving them around on a street corner, hoping somebody will pull over and offer me a jump. It's rush hour in Washington, DC. Cars keep passing. Finally, a vehicle pulls over and it is a giant truck full of porta potties. So the driver gets out, he's tall, he's young like me. And he says, I'll give you a jump start but you gotta let me take you out to dinner. So the fact that this guy is literally driving a truck full of shit is definitely not a turn on, but it wasn't necessarily a deal breaker, right? I mean, it's not like he's covered in shit. Hell, it's a job, right? He's got a driver's license and with cargo like that, he's probably got really good safe driving habits. And if he'd offered me the jump and then asked me out, I might've said yes, but what he said is he wanted me to go on a date with him in exchange for the jump start, which means if I say no, he's gonna leave me there on the side of the road. I feel like I'm being coerced. And I told him no. 
because that ultimatum stank worse than the truck. Boom. Boom. Thank you, Tori in Pittsburgh. Mary, I am tempted to ask our competitors, our slammers this evening, mm -hmm. something about their cities. And maybe we'll do that afterwards because we want to keep this moving. For example, I'm not asking, but I'd like to ask Tori a little bit about maybe, I mean, there's a lot of good sports teams in, in, in Pittsburgh, college and pro, uh, and Francesca in Chicago. I don't know why, it doesn't need to be sports, but maybe I'll wait until after, right? We'll just keep the stories moving uh, along here. Exactly. Everybody Overall, wants to the body of work this evening is astounding. Incredible. Right? It is. Like you've like the first couple of slams, or at least one of them, this was back in like late summer. You were, you did, you slammed. Exactly. You know how hard this is. I know. And it's amazing. They're just the level of amazing storytellers. It's just, Indeed. yes. Indeed. Thank you to everybody, right? Yes. Do so you think if you keep thanking, it loses its luster a little bit or you can just keep saying it? No, I think we can say it to this group. They're an evolved group. Next up, you never know what you're going to get with this guy down in Hotlanta. Cheddar. Uh, we're going to find him and we're going to spotlight him. Mary, help me look for Cheddar. Oh, <laughs> oh there he is. Got him? Yeah, I found him. All right, Cheddar, take your time, ma'am. It was once said that cocaine is a hell of a drug, but that bitch crystal meth, she's a motherfucker. And I ought to know because we had a 10-year tumultuous relationship with some incredible highs and some very low lows. As a matter of fact, one of the first lows I experienced was a day we can remember. March 19, 2003, uh, shock and awe. While we were bombing Baghdad, I was in the hospital emergency room trying to figure out why it felt like my heart was about to jump out of my chest. Little did I know that was one of the many side effects along with the paranoia and the Coke bottle dilated eyes that you have from this drug. My habit was so bad that even a week long stint in the hospital with double pneumonia slowed me down because the first person I went to when I got out was of course my dealer. And the only thing that made me realize um, I had a problem was after a night of partying or what we used to call shooting darts or getting to the point, I showed up at my doctor's office the next day so high that they had to send me off to a support group of all things called icebreakers. And from there, I began a long, long road of relapse and recovery before finally giving it up altogether. Boom. Boom, Cheddar in Atlanta, thank you. Bring on the fringe shirt. Uh, let's promote that too. Oh. I gotta get my ass in gear, Mary, because I, I, got, I got some fringe shit to work on. Oh, do you uh, need help with that? Because I can help you get things moving. You I just like the kick in the ass. I'm just, uh, you know, but people don't want to hear that. It doesn't make for great TV. Well, we just dropped it in there and we're moving on. We're promoting. Drop it in real quick, embed it in the conversation and move on, right? Move on. Uh, let's remind everybody to look in the chat. Yeah. Uh, that is the main way people are communicating. Uh, let's again, thank all our tellers, including Vandy and Perky. I don't know if she's still with us, but she let us off. We've done that before. I like that. Maybe we'll do that again. Yes, I like it. I like it. So we have two uh, names left, right? No, we three have three names. Three names. We, we have, have three names. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that means, by the way, if all the second rounders from the other slams are available and presumably interested, the Grand Slam will have 18 slammers. Wow. And I have a backup because one of our slammers from season two, who was in the Grand Slam, uh, couldn't make it. Oh. So I feel like it would be legit if one of our tellers can't make it that we insert him in there. That Absolutely. makes sense. That seems fair. Sure. All right. Teller number four. We're going from Atlanta north, a bit northeast, back to Mr. Mark M. Let's find Mark and spotlight him. There you are. <laughs> They're helping us out, Mary. You got to appreciate that. Because this is the group they are. This is. This is they help. They help, we help each other. All right, Mark, take your time then. I see cops through the hole they've made in my door. And I think I'll be taken more seriously with pants. I'm 18, I'm living in this dive apartment in Anchorage, 19 different roommates in six months. One night, Larry absolutely flips out, starts threatening to kill people, barricades the door with me inside. 
I'm in my room reading a book by candlelight. Larry drags me out in the living room, tells me we have to strip so we can feel the evil emanations. Our other roommates start coming home. Larry tells them they're all Satan and tells them to fuck off. They start collecting in the youth hostel downstairs and I start yelling for people to call the police. And they do, but the police say that they don't do domestic disputes. Around 1 a.m., Larry points at my room and he goes, Satan! And I look over and I see flames. My candle burnt to the floor and lit the carpet. I grab up these curtains and I run in and I stomp it out. Around 2 a.m., one of my roommates decides to call the police again. This time they say it's theft because he can't get his stuff. The police say curses. Around 3 a.m., they show up, bam, bam, bam. Larry calls them Satan. They are not amused. They break our door down. And then they say, there's your stuff. Are you happy now? And leave. Boom. Boom. Thanks, Mark. All right, that was Mark. Uh, well under time. Tight story. Fourth teller. Uh, we've got two more, Mary. Then if everyone's under time, you will do it like you did last time. But there will be six tellers. You'll summarize. There will be one final vote. There will be winners. And there will be... Um, I don't know. Is it losers or non-winners? How? What do we say in 2021? Yeah, it, it depends. We could say non-winners. We can, but it's not really accurate. I, I guess it is. It's true. It's true. If you're in Boston, it's like you're a loser. You know, right. With an AH. Some but I don't the, think I feel good about that. Some of it's the affect, the accent, for right. sure. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. One, well, two more left. Let's roll. We're making good time. Not that we need to rush, but you know, we got to respect people's times. Exactly. Second to last teller this evening, back to Iowa. Anu, where are you? And we will hear your second story of this. Here I am. You're, you're in. All right. Am I spotlighted? I don't see a spotlighted on my screen. You, I believe, are spotlighted. Mary, is she spotlighted? There I am. There you go. Yeah. Okay. My mother lives in India and is very much an Indian woman, which means she's all about these Hindu things of detachment and fate and destiny and things like that. She also thinks of herself as very evolved and spiritual. So she's always telling me about how things don't bother her, how she's not attached to anything, and how she doesn't care about what's happening in her life because she's so evolved. I get to visit her once a year, once in two years. As the trip gets closer, I ask her, are you excited to see me? And she responds with, my life is the same whether you're here or not. I still have to be in the kitchen. I guess it'll be nice to have you here, but I'm not excited. So we get there. We have a good time and it's time to leave. And I ask again, are you gonna miss me when I leave? I mean, by this time she knows the answer I'm looking for. And so she says, I know what you want me to say, but she reverts to her philosophizing. And she says, I know you don't like this, but when you're here, it's nice. When you leave, my life goes on. I don't really feel these big American things you talk about, all these feelings that you always have to keep discussing. My, I'm just detached. And then I come back to the US long flights later. And one of her first texts to me is always, I miss you. I wish you were here. And I wish you could have stayed longer. Boom. Boom, boom, boom it is from Iowa City, Queen Mary. How many people you know in Iowa City, Mary? Uh, I believe two, Anu and Corey. Yeah, Corey's <laughs> also from uh, the area. Yes, the, the, so I know two. <laughs> because of Zoom and you, see? You know, well, hey, you know what? It's nice to meet people. Uh, we will, I would love to meet people in person. Do you think it's possible that we will meet people in person and think like, ah, I don't actually really like you very much? Oh, no. I don't okay, I'm just wondering. I have, I'm self-conscious. No, I think- Worry we'll, about this. It'll be hugs and joy. I think it'll be okay. great. I'm optimistic. <laughs> if you're in the room, it will be that. <laughs> I, I, you will bring that energy for sure I'll bring that final story <laughs> April 4th 2021 remember the date our final storyteller of Sla season 3 slam 3 is a man named Michael in the Pacific Northwest and uh, Michael when you are ready close this shit out alright so 
I'm going to tell you another part behind the scenes from what just happened last weekend with, with my dad. And I, I just have to describe this moment. And at the end, this will be a little public service announcement too about dementia and things but that goes longer than 99 seconds. But I have to tell you, we did get my dad after a very difficulty with COVID and everything going on back to my mom's house for hospice care. And at that moment last Saturday, when we knew the, you know, everything was going to, he was going to transition as the hospice people say, um, and we knew it was coming. Um, and you, they tell you, hey, you know, hearing is the last to go and you're saying your goodbyes. And we're, we're in that moment. And so we had music playing in the background from Comcast and, uh, and my, and, and as we're doing this, that's in, in my family small, it was just my mom, me and a, and a caregiver we brought in to help us and my dad. And as we're doing this final goodbye, I have to tell you the Comcast station that my mom picked was sort of a Muzak station and honest to God, honest to God, I couldn't get it out of my mind as I'm watching my dad in his final moments is Debbie Boone's You Light Up My Life is playing in the background, probably the scourgiest song of the 1980s. And I know that's not really, but I couldn't get out of my head. I said, oh my God, I cannot believe that song is playing right now. I, I, I couldn't help it. Here you're in this moment, but I hear this, this song that, that you just didn't like. And so I didn't say anything. I just, you know, we're, we're in this moment and then everything kind of happens and we go, we go a little, um, a couple hours later, as we're kind of we're kind of hanging, just the three of us, and I couldn't bear it in. I'm too gregarious. I talk too much, like even here, and you guys are awesome to listen to this. And and I just said, "Mom, mom, caregiver, I I, I have to say it. What song was playing?" And they were they were uh they they I they all kind of looked at me funnily and said, "Mike, we noticed the song too." And the caregiver said, "Yeah, I noticed that was that song too." But now that song is the favorite song of my life. So. And we were lucky, lucky, lucky to get him home for, for a hospice type care. I asked me afterwards, I, I've learned so much about end of life. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Michael. Thank you. Michael, I am, um, thank you for sharing that story. And I was a little bit not clear on when I should start the clock and when you oh. actually started your story. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I think, uh, I don't know when I started. <laughs> I don't either. So it's it was quite long. Okay, uh, never mind. So don't worry about it. No, I'm going to put your name in the finals because yes, I wasn't so. clear and we'll let the audience decide. Okay. Even though it was over it's, because I wasn't clear. It's over. Okay, don't worry a about it. A two-parter and a preamble, but it's this, all good. Okay. This evening has just been a, yeah, okay. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll do that. And I, okay. I wouldn't typically, but that's sort of a, a, a kind of a, exceptional situation. Mary, would you please summarize for us? I will put them in and we will take one final vote. Yes. We will have a winner and then we will have a top three. And the reason the top three matter for this particular slam is I'm going to send them some lettuce. Yes. AKA dough. Oh. AKA moolah. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a massive amount? No, but it's going to be something. So lovely. I mean, the effort. Whatever came in from tellers and audience member goes right back out. Exactly. All right. I am ready if you are ready, Miss I'm um, ready. Queen. I'm ready. So Francesca was the Furies personified when she handled a sound in her house after her husband passed. Tori made sure to stand up for her, her rights and her values when a man in a truck full of shit tried to make her compromise to jump her car. Um, Chetta? Crystal Meth was quite a dance, and uh, he made sure that he got out of that dance and left her on the dance floor. Mark, um, God, the devil, Larry, and the cops. It was better he put his pants on to deal with them. Anu did get from her mother the fact that she missed her, even though she didn't necessarily say it when she was going to and from her, but those tech messages made her heart, came to her heart. And Michael, you light up my last song will be something he will always remember. All right. All right. Could you please uh, summarize Francesca's again so I can put a, a decent couple of keywords in? Sure. Um, she handled a uh, noise in her house on her own. I like the Furies uh, personified, though, I have to say. What? The Furies personified made me laugh. 
That was cool. I didn't put that, but I think what I put is clear. I'm sure you, Sean, you're a master at the polls, so I'm sure. <laughs> I haven't actually gotten that one before. <laughs> See? Do you have any announcements before I launch this last poll, Mary? I, I don't have anything right now, except I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to be hosting and I'm happy to see everybody on the 18th. So come join us. Awesome. Your slam three winner will be uh, revealed in just a moment. And we will announce the top three because those particulars are um, getting a cash prize. All of these people here are gonna go to the uh, Grand Slam. Here we go. Francesca, Tori, Cheddar, Mark, Anu, and Michael, 42 people can vote. I hope you all do. Oh, oh, vote. Ooh. Should I make sounds? I think sounds are good. You haven't done that before. We're always involved. We have not done that before. <laughs> it is going to be a close one. I think our winner is being is quite clear. I would agree. I think it. our winner, and I will say this, the um, second, third, and fourth is really close. Mm -hmm. so can you all please vote? There's actually only one other person. And, you know, look, uh, it's Zoom. Maybe some people are doing other things. So let's give it a, a full minute, another 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, oh, we have, from that, we do have a second place. Yes. We have a first place, and we have a third place. Yes, we do. Right? We do, yep. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? So when we announce it, I'll announce third and second and you are announced first, but we gotta make sure we're on the same page. Yeah, we sure are. We sure are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text you right now. All right, cool. Do I need to know anything before he announces? I don't, I don't think so. Do I need to know anything? I don't believe so. Yeah, so. No, uh, just... do we, we should just, are you, are you messaging me? This yeah. is terrible TV, but. No, well, listen, we're making sure it's right, right? We're making sure it's right. Right? Yeah. Message okay. me second and third so we're on the same page. Okay. Thanks, everyone, again. You did a great job telling your stories, uh, tellers and uh, audience members for being here, being patient. Uh, some of them even laughed at my attempts at humor. Well, they're, they're, this is a good group. They're supportive. <laughs> yeah. All right. In third place, in third place, barely, th second and third were, were quite close. Close. From uh, Bloomington and Chicago, third place, Francesca. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up for Francesca. I'll do second and you do number one, okay? Yes. Yes. In second place, live from Atlanta, Cheddar. Give it up. Cheddar and Francesca are in the, um, what is it? The uh, place and show. Oh. And now we could drag this out more, but we won't. Queen Mary's going to announce. Well, one thing that we haven't place. had that I pulled out for this. <laughs> oh. Yes. I love it. Milk this as much as you want. Yes. So our first place winner made sure that she didn't get a jump from a guy in a truck full of shit. Tori! Tori in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania wins it. Slam number three, the champion. Uh, great job, y'all. Thank you again, tellers. Thank you again, audience. Of course, Mary. And uh, we will, uh, we will uh, what, are we, what are we doing now? What are we calling this? A Q and A? It's not a Q and A, really. It's just, a, we're gonna chill for a little bit. Yeah, it's the behind the scenes after show. For those of you that want to bounce, as the kids say, uh, <laughs> goodbye and thank you. And we are formally sort of ending this evening. Huge thanks. And remember, in two weeks, we have our Grand Slam. And okay. for everyone else who wants to hang and talk and chat and congratulate and ask questions and complain and whine Please and do. plug and promote and whatever else, show us your animals and your pets. Yes. Hang out, unmute yourself, and let's talk. Thanks again, y'all.